Hey, John. Mm. The paper says it's going to be 65 degrees today. Mm-hmm. I think we ought to ride. Well, our first stop today is going to be Margin Ray's over here on Sandbridge Road to get us a nice breakfast. Uh, gosh, these guys have been here for a long time. Family owned, um, really good food, uh, reasonably priced and kind of tucked away and uh, off the beaten path unless you're going to the uh, resort area of Sandbridge. Nice place. Haven't been there in a while. Looking forward to it. Too much. Too much food. So typical with this time of year, my family and friends ask me about my New Year's resolutions. Well, I have to tell them that I don't do New Year's resolutions. I haven't done them in, gosh, 25, 30 years. I don't believe in them. Uh, I prefer to actually have goals. And although they can be the same, generally they are not. Um, news resolutions tend to become unpalatable faster than leftover turkey after Christmas. An example, uh, back when I was a regular at the gym for quite a few years, um, January 2nd, the gym would be full of people with their New Year's resolutions. Uh, workouts and by March they were gone back to a normal level so this went on year after year after year uh, I, you know, I personally believe that goals should be very precise should be written down uh, sort of like a blueprint for the rest of your life and it's because I, I believe it's difficult to hit a target you can't see clearly the typical person if you ask him what their goals are what their New Year's resolutions are it's I want to make more money and I want to lose weight and I want to get in shape. Well, how much money exactly? How much weight? And define getting in shape. And if you take the person that says they wanted more money and you hand them a penny and there you go and you go to him, there you go, goal achieved. Uh, they're liable to feel a tad bit insulted because they really haven't fleshed that idea out in their own mind. They just knew they wanted more money but no idea how much money or how to get it. Uh, I like to review my goals regularly. That's what my holiday downtime is. I reflect on, you know, things I've accomplished in my life, things I've been happy about, things I want to change, things I want to do differently, and, and just continue to move forward. When I make a new goal, I make a list of objectives that need to be overcome uh, and a strategy to reach any one of those. For example, if you're going to go on a trip, you know, the first thing, you, you know, besides you want to go on a motorcycle trip to the West Coast, well, are you going to camp? Or are you going to stay in a hotel? If you're going to stay at a campground and camp, uh, what kind of tent you're going to take, you have to do all this preliminary homework. You don't want to get on the trip and go, you know, I need to stop at Walmart and get a tent. Mm, doesn't really work very well. I also like to make my uh, take my goals and break them down into little tiny components so I can work on them weekly and see the objective. It's sort of like the old saying, how do you eat an elephant? Uh, one bite at a time. Early January and for the temperature to be about 60. And the sun's even trying to come out. I read an article this morning that we need to adapt to a Norwegian mindset where we don't let the cold temperatures deter us from getting out and doing stuff. And I, I love that.
course, 60 degrees is not, isn't, we're not suffering at all, but <laughs> just got to figure out how to dress for it. We are heading towards uh, what we think of as Pungo, the southern part of Virginia Beach, where there's more open space. Lots of farmland and horse pastures, that kind of thing. We're going to head out to Munden Point Park, which is a, a pretty spot. Years and years ago, uh, I participated in a wild women's weekend there. <laughs> it was kind of like um, Girl Scout camp for adult women. And we kayaked and we learned how to cook on a uh, outdoor uh, stove and that kind of thing. It was, uh, it was a hoot. My, uh, my sister talked me into it. That's a fond memory. a nice setting for a home. Lots of open space. The water's right over there. Oh, isn't that gorgeous? <laughs> now we're, this is the entranceway to the park. Oh, there we go, Munden Point Park. Everything's kind of soupy. I didn't realize we had that much rain recently, but puddles everywhere. If you follow the channel, you know I like to collect success stories. So speaking of goals and success stories, here's one for you. Uh, there was a fellow named Ed. Ed had always wanted to be an astronaut after watching those fellows on TV for years. And his family just kind of laughed at him, I, I suspect. Uh, See, so Ed didn't exactly start off with the right stuff. He graduated college with a degree in industrial management, not the stuff astronauts are made from. So he joined the Navy, uh, got himself a commission after he went back to school and got himself a degree in aeronautics. Went back to school and got an advanced degree in astronautics from MIT. He became a Navy pilot and he became a test pilot. Then he worked at the Advanced Bath and Navigation Center where he trained astronauts. Well, then he, his philosophy was, I was going to keep adding degrees and things on my resume until NASA had no choice but to make me an astronaut. And did they? Well, <clears throat> this is it, Ed Mitchell. He was the lunar module pilot on Apollo 14. And yes, he walked on the moon. Goal achieved. The man was definitely goal oriented. They say that uh, more people are disappointed as they close in on the end of their life by the things they did not do, by the things that they did do. And that's always sort of been one of my guiding principles in life. And uh, this poem I'm going to read to you is uh, one of my favorites. It's uh, by Jessie Rittenhouse. Uh, she was a uh, She was a poet that lived in the uh, latter part of the 19th century and through the first part of the 20th century. And I think it's a very powerful poem. I bargained with life for a penny, and life would pay no more. However, I begged at evening when I counted my scanty store. For life is a just employer. He gives you what you ask. But once you have set the wages... Why, you must bear the task. I worked for a menial's hire, only to learn dismayed, that any wage I had asked of life, life would have gladly paid. 
So Miriam and myself would like to wish each one of you a very happy, healthy, and prosperous 2021. Take care.